Right, so as I say, it's going to be a long one length section. Okay. So what we're going to do, the reason we do this is obviously we're going to keep us... from each section? Yeah, from, yeah, from yeah, both, from each right across. Yeah. If you can't see, come closer because obviously you need to... You need to see clearly what I'm doing. Okay, so you've got your two sections here, and you've taken a bit from both sides. So you've got a section running right across the bottom of your yes. hairline. Okay. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a one, a long one length, simply because we want to keep as much hair on this head as we can. Okay. So obviously we're going to not take too much off. So this is the first haircut I've done. What we do is we start in the middle. And we're going to keep the angle, and when I talk about angles, as we go further through our cups, it will make more sense. But the angle of projection is basically the angle at which you hold the hair from the head, okay? And we're, we're working on zero projection today, okay? Being zero here. When you layer in, obviously we're going to be coming out. When, I, when we were doing setting, we were talking about holding it at 90 degrees from the head, which is obviously a right angle, okay? So, so under understanding your projection. So projection is zero, so you want it to be as flat as you can get it. So if you're working on a person, you'd be holding it against their back. You know, if you're working on a shorter length, you'd be holding it against the neck. What you don't want to do is come out. So your fingers must be in at zero at all times, okay? Throughout this cut, definitely. So we're gonna go in, we start in the middle, so right in the middle, and what, for the first cut, what you really must be important is your posture. And you'll see I'm sitting on a cutting stool. This is mainly so that I'm nice and straight, but what you need to try and do is make sure your shoulders are straight and your arms are straight. If you're not, if you're sitting like that, you're gonna you're gonna be you know on the wonk before you even start. So you must keep up nice and straight. And you and you must make sure your client hasn't got their legs crossed. If you're working on a person and they have their legs crossed, when you think about your position, as soon as you do that. You're going to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. so you must make sure that you're not you're not doing that. All right. So obviously you're not going to have that problem today because we're working on the tuition head here. So we're going to make our first cut. And what you're going to do is keep keep your thing at zero, projection at zero, and you're just going to go along. So you can see I'm taking about an inch off mine. Okay. So I've got a nice straight line. So what I'm going to do now is take a bit of the section I've got that I've just cut and the next bit to it. So I'm going to cut this section in three parts. Now this first cut is now called my guideline, so I'm going to follow my guide. You can see the straight bit that I've cut. So you cut under um, your fingers, yeah? Yeah, you're cutting under your finger. You don't want to be cutting on your finger, you're going to cut just <laughs> below. Just so you can see what you're doing. Obviously if you're cutting like that, it's going to be hard to see where your line is. So obviously give yourself enough space so you can see your guideline clearly. Okay. If you can't see a guideline, don't cut. That's the first rule of cutting. Okay. So you're following zero projection, so I'm still nice and flat against the, the head. And I'm following my straight line. So you can see my fingers are nice and straight, and I'm following. So what you should have now is a nice straight line. So what we do before we move on to the next section, you just take a piece from here and a piece from here and pull it down at the same time and you're just making sure that it's nice and straight and you're even both sides. What you're looking for is it not to be longer one side. It's really important on that first section to make sure it's right before you move on to your next sections. And that is, it's nice and straight. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take our one, one side down, obviously keeping hold of it, and you're going to take the similar size section so you can see the depth at which I'm taking that, I'm keeping it nice and small there. Okay, and I'm going to take that from one side, go to the second side, and take the same one. Okay, so again, you're working across the whole of that back section. You're going to do that. Again, we're going to start in the middle. I'm going to section off a bit either side, hold that middle. Making sure I'm at zero. Now I can see my guide. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. you can see your guide underneath it. So you can see now what I mean. If you take too big a section, you're not gonna, it's gonna be harder to see that guide underneath what you're doing. Okay, you can see my guide. What I'm gonna do with a one length, what we do is we make a tiny, tiny little bit longer each time we do a section. So and I do mean fractional, like a like one mil difference. 
And what that will do is so you don't cut on your guideline, you cut just under your guideline. Okay, so potentially you're making a slightly new guideline every time. Can anyone think why we might do this? So when it's all flat, it's going to all match in and it's going to be the same length. Well, you've got higher over the head. Yeah, yeah, so you're going to move up the head, but what it, what it also is, is when you style it, it's not so much on a long one length, but especially on a jaw li jawline one length, you what happens have. is it, it helps it to go under. It, it just helps you to style it, and it helps the client to wear, you know, especially on a real classic bob, what I call a classic bob, a jaw length bob, it helps, if it's straight hair, it will just tip under on its own, and they will literally be able to let it dry do that and it'll just swing into place okay but also what it will do is it will stop um any form of graduation and by that i mean I, you may have seen it you might have had it happen to you um when someone's cut a one length hair and the underneath sections are longer than the top sections that's called graduation that is caused from not doing that what i've just said leaving it slightly longer and also um from you get that if you do that if you lift it out past mm. zero you're going to get that as well okay and what you also what also can help with doing that is obviously making the client pop their head forward slightly before you start cutting and then you definitely won't get any so they're all the little tip okay so we're talking we are talking very fractional if, you, if you're leaving if you can visually see it if you know what i mean you've took you've left it too long you need to go back so literally just under the guide and again what we're looking for you can see that already just in that one section, look how it's sitting already. Mm -hmm. It's going to help it to be styled and go under. It's going to make your blow drying effortless. <laughs> okay, and obviously it's going to help the client to maintain their style in between cuts. Okay, so we do the same again. Is that what you do all the way up the head? Just exactly the same. So we're going to go all the way up. So I'll show you. Speed it up a little bit now so everyone can understand. And you can see this, I'm going to have less hair. As you work on these heads, you'll have less coming off as you go up the head. Okay, so I'm going to, my aim is to get it all to one length. Okay, and then so I'm going to work up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take slightly bigger sections. <laughs> but I need to do that. I want you to keep them nice and small. Okay, because I can obviously then be able to see my sections. What I might find on this, which I think I'm going to, yeah, look, I'm going to run out of hair. Yeah, what's happened now is I've run out of hair. So what's happening now is this hair is shorter than my length. Okay, so obviously what I'm going to have to do is go back and take a bit more off. What I'm going to do, because I'm aware of the time, I want you to have a good old go at this cut. And I'm just going to show, go move on and show you how you would cut the sides, the sides into that. Obviously, bearing in mind, you know, you do the same all the way through that section, okay, till you get to the top of that section. So you've got your one line all the way through. So if you imagine we've done that, which we have, because obviously they're it's short. Oh, we've got a little bit there to cut off. Look. So let's do that first, let's make sure this whole section is, yeah, so you can see I'm just taking it to my guideline, just below it. You can see the way I'm holding my scissors. Mm -hmm. See, so now my length is all one length through the back section, so I've got it all nice and straight. I don't want to take any more than that off today because I want to keep as much hair on this so we move through the hair parts. But you might find on yours, you might want to just take slightly more off than I did, obviously. So once we've cut that back section, what we're going to do there is we're going to bring the same amount of hair down on the, on the side, so a very small sort of half an inch depth section. Okay. And what we're going to do on these, um, it doesn't make so much difference. But if you were doing it on a real person, we've got to allow for that ear. If you think about how, especially in some cases, some people's ears stick out further than others. So obviously you would look at this during a consultation. But obviously we've got to allow for that. So if you were to comb down over the ear, 
and pull straight and cut. And what do you think is going to happen when you let go? It's going to It's going to rise up. So what you've got to do is allow for that bounce over the ear. Okay. So how we counteract that is take the little section that sits over the ear. Okay. And we're going to pull it back slightly. So you can see my guide line is here. And there's quite sparse there, so you'll see more on the next section. So I've pulled it back slightly. So what's going to happen is that section there, because you pull it back, is going to be slight, very, very slightly longer. Therefore, when it's dry, you're going to have allowed for that bounce. If you don't do that, what happens? When you dry, you'll have like a gap missing. And there'll be like, in the bottom of that length around the ear, there'll be like a semicircle missing where it's risen up. Okay. And then the section before the, before the ear, so because obviously we left that little bit out, then you can bring that down, find your guide look, and you're going to cut to that. What will happen if you pull, sorry, pull that section back as well? Yes, yeah, so the front's going to be longer. So sometimes that you're going to want that. So that obviously when we're doing a one length with an extended bit in the front, that's how you're going to get that. But for today, I want it all to be the, the same length. Okay. And then what we do, actually, is take the same section on this side and do the same again, but obviously the opposite direction now. So let's show you that again. So we're going to, turn around. So we're going to take the section over the ear. So you can see that it just leaves you a little bit in the front, but the section over the ear is going to come backwards, so you're going to pull it. And then this side is not a lot there, look. You can see. So we're just following that and cutting it to our guide. Okay, so we're stretching it back. And then what we do, you see your guide in the very front section, you cut it normally. Okay, so you can see that bit there is a bit missing. So this next section, you'll see it. So we'll do that again to show you. You can see when you're cutting these, you can see how uneven they are, the hair is woven into it, and quite often there's bits missing. So if, you, if you're going through your cut and you're thinking, I've took an inch off there, but actually there's nothing coming off here, it probably is just where it's woven in, so don't worry, but we'll, we'll look at that as we're going through. So we leave the section before the ear, okay? And just take the section over the ear, and just take it back. So you can see, you can see your guide, so this, see your guide underneath it, and you're going to take it to that, okay? And in the front, you bring it down and cut to your section. When you're working today, guys, I, can't, I understand that this is by the time you get back to there and you've got to here, you've already forgotten about this. So don't worry too much about this. I'll come around and help you as you're doing. I just want to show you how you obviously complete the cut. And then I'll go through step by step as you get to that stage when you're working today, guys. Okay. And don't forget, you're going to be working at different speeds, so don't worry about what someone's doing next door to you. Okay, so I'm pulling across, you can see my guide, and you can see the little bits that are coming off. And then we bring that section forward. And meet our guide. So obviously as you work up there, you can see your guide becomes thicker and thicker and easier to see. Your first few sections are the hardest because they, you know, your first section is going to be quite slim. So you're not going to have a great deal of bulk of hair there to see. Once you're happy that your sides are both the same, you can obviously work up the whole of one side and then go to the opposite side. But definitely the first two or three sections you want to do in unison so you can check and make sure that they're the same length. Okay. So again, there's not a lot coming off there, look. So we pulled it back and pulled it down. So what you'll notice is although at the moment it looks like it's slightly longer in the front, it won't be. When it's dry, you'll see it'll be lovely and straight. Pull that section down. Because straight is the hardest one. This is, I think this is the hardest haircut yeah. today because obviously you're working on a line. You must keep that straight line at all times. And if you, and it, and I think with layering, not that you can make mistakes, you shouldn't make mistakes on any cut, but, but it, it will, it's not quite so obvious. When it's a one length, if you take a chunk out or you know you don't allow for that curve on the ear, there's no disguising it, it's there for everyone to see. 
So it is most definitely, <coughs> technically, I'd say it's probably the hardest cut. You allow for a little bit of length over the ear when you said pull back. Yeah. You just loosen your grip slightly. No, what we're doing is instead of pulling it there, yeah. we're going to pull it there. So what you can see is just taking it that way Longer, slightly. Right. You're just stretching out, so you can see that hair there mm -hmm. is going to be dragged back, which makes it's going to be very fractionally longer over okay. that ear. So when you let go, okay. it's going to bounce. So that, that becomes more apparent on when you're doing on a real live client, because obviously they've got, they've got ears. The ears on these are very small and very flat, so they don't, they don't give you a true picture of how that, you know, how that is. So you can see my guide under there, and I'm cutting to it. So you can see very closely, probably on that there as well. You can see how minimal that little bit longer is. So you can see your guide underneath there. Yeah? yeah? And that is going to help you when you dry it. It's going to look the same length, but it's going to be much easier to style. You'll get a much better finish on that. Let's have a look at this one. So, and when we do one left, we always cut in the middle parting. Even if the client is where, where's the side parting, we're going to cut in the middle parting. Does anyone, anyone know why that might be? Why might we do that? So it's, it's even. even. Okay. Yeah, so it's even. So obviously, if you, wear, if you cut the hair on a side parting, and then the client decides they want to change their parting, they're going to have a bit longer one side than the other. If you do it in the middle, you can wear your parting absolutely anywhere. Okay. So what can you do? You can see there's much more hair on the other side of this head, isn't there? A lot more coming off that other side. So you can see we're pulling back slightly to allow for that ear. You can see my guide under there. And I'm cutting. Then on that very front section we just bring it down and follow. And again you can see my guide underneath. We're just below it cut my line. Lovely. Okay, so it's going to do that. So obviously that is how we're going to do you one length. But what I want you to do is obviously don't go burning on right through it. And turn it off now, thank you. Um, don't go burning <coughs> right through it. What I want to do is I want to